Can you eat fruits if you have fatty liver? In this video, I'll share the top 10 fruits for fatty liver and six foods to avoid that can worsen liver fat, also known as hepatic stetosis. Did you know that 30 to 40% of adults worldwide may have fatty liver? Recent studies used to cite 30%. Now this figure has risen to an alarmingly high number and it's still growing. Much of this increase is due to diet. Did you know that diet directly impacts fatty liver, either improving or worsening it? So grab a pen and paper to note foods to avoid or eat in moderation, and the best fruits rich in antioxidants and natural anti-inflammatories to help. All right, let's begin with the six foods you should avoid. Number one is fructose syrup or corn syrup. There's a lot of talk about fructose being off limits for those with fatty liver, but it's not the fructose from fruits like oranges or apples. It's the industrialized fructose found in sweetened drinks, filled cookies, and sweet cakes. This type of fructose, the fructose syrup, is the harmful one, not the fructose from fruits. So here's the first myth busted. You can and should eat fruits. That fructose won't harm you. Fructose syrup is one of the worst things for people with fatty liver. Avoid all these foods I mentioned and check the labels too. If there's corn syrup or fructose syrup, avoid it. You noticed I used the word forbidden, right? To suggest foods you should never consume. Like fructose syrup, ideally avoid it completely. Got it? Number two, sugary drinks like soda, boxed juice, and chocolate milk. Why? These drinks are packed with simple carbs. We've seen before that sugar and insulin spikes aren't the main issue. That's natural. But for those with fatty liver or diabetes who are insulin resistant, these drinks overload their system. The same goes for natural fruit juices like grape or orange juice. Why? You remove fiber, making it more concentrated. A glass of OJ has about four or five oranges worth of sugar. Some places use even more. All that sugar hits a compromised system, causing damage. It's not like taking a sip of juice when someone asks, want to try this? No, that's not what I mean. But if it's in your daily routine, you could be harming your liver with these drinks. As for sodas or chocolate milk, yes, they have added sugar, so you should avoid them. Some fruit juices like cherry, passion fruit, or lemon are less concentrated and okay if you have fatty liver or diabetes. Since we're on drinks, I'll stress that alcoholic beverages should be avoided entirely if possible. Why? As an endocrinologist and metabolic specialist, I know how alcohol affects our liver. If you already have liver issues like fatty liver, you should avoid alcohol completely. The latest liver fat guideline in the protocol has a note I'll explain so you'll know if you hear it from another doctor. What does this note say? It states that if you have a liver issue like fatty liver not caused by alcohol but lifestyle, even one drink might not harm. But it's hard to know alcohol's real effect, what's fatty liver, or if alcohol is making it worse. So I strongly advise avoiding all alcoholic drinks even with that asterisk in the protocol. I always emphasize that I speak based on science here, so I like to cite the data. Number three, processed meats and foods high in sodium like instant noodles. Instant noodles can contain your entire daily sodium needs. Just one pack has 70% of your daily sodium intake, so you should avoid these too. Diets high in ultra-processed, sodium-rich foods are linked to fatty liver. Deli meats like salami, ham, and turkey breast contain nitrates and nitrites, linked to increased bowel cancer risk. Even Parma ham should be avoided. Studies show eating these three plus times weekly increases bowel cancer risk. Those who enjoy deli meats often easily reach this amount, so be careful. Oh, I was told once a week doesn't increase cancer risk. Studies say it doesn't, but it's better to avoid it, okay? It's easy to eat three or more times. When I survey patients, most eat this much or more. Got it? Processed meats like boxed burgers, frozen pizzas, not homemade, but store-bought, and diets high in these foods are linked to increased liver fat. More people eating this way means more liver fat. You see, 40% of adults in some regions, that's very significant. It's scary to even say that number. Item four to avoid, not totally, but be careful with. White flour in bread, pasta, cakes, and sweets. Why? Because white flour is high in carbohydrates. If you're already watching your health, pay extra attention to this. I know it's tough, but some combos like whole grain bread with protein or egg can work. That's why I'm not banning it, just saying be careful. But if you wake up daily and eat three buttered rolls, then yeah, 
you really need to watch out, okay? You've got to mind the amount. Just because it's not totally off limits doesn't mean you should eat it daily or multiple times a day. Be mindful of combinations. Same goes for pasta. A big pasta dish with sauce and oil is one thing. A small portion with protein like chicken breast is better, even for fatty liver. But be careful. Often people overdo carbs, which can turn to liver fat, okay? Not burning off excess leads to metabolic issues, got it? Number five is another delicate point, saturated fats. These include lard, butter, ice cream, fatty meats, visible fat on meat, fried foods like chips, chicken skin, and coconut oil. While coconut oil is thought to be healthy, it's mostly saturated fat, so be cautious with these foods. Dairy products, whole foods, and cheeses, especially yellow ones like Parmesan, provolone, and cheddar, are also high in saturated fats. Now you're thinking, but aren't dairy products good? Yes, but choose low-fat options, okay? Cream also has saturated fat. Avoid these foods if you have fatty liver. You can make better swaps for these foods. For instance, if you want cheese, go for one with less saturated fat, like ricotta. If you're craving meat, choose a leaner cut. Got it? Milk? Go for skim milk. For cooking, use extra virgin olive oil or coconut oil instead of lard. It's healthier. Don't ban fats entirely, just moderate. High saturated fat diets raise bad LDL cholesterol linked to heart disease and fatty liver. The same applies to fruits. We do need some LDL, the bad cholesterol. Cholesterol is vital for hormones like testosterone, cortisol, and vitamin D. Fats are crucial for digestion and cell membrane formation. So yes, you need cholesterol, but excess cholesterol is harmful. If you make these swaps I mentioned, you'll be doing your health a favor. Number six on the list of foods to avoid, sauces. You can make smarter choices here too. Did you know this is a common mistake many people make? Sauces with added sugar, fatty ones like Parmesan, and even Caesar dressing. Are you aware how calorie dense Caesar dressing is? Honey mustard sauce. Who's a fan of that? It's also high in calories, yet many think it's super healthy. Mayonnaise and ketchup are culprits too. Some store-bought sauces even have added sugar. Did you know? Number six, added sugar again. The kind you put in coffee? Avoid it if possible. For salads, try apple cider or balsamic vinegar instead. Use a low-calorie dressing to make your salad even healthier. Adding fatty dressing means extra calories and fat in what should be a light meal. So, be careful with your choice of dressings. If you're using too much dressing, that could be your mistake. Talking to patients, I see this is a common mistake. Overusing sauces, not paying attention to them. You might be counting calories, tracking your diet, but forgetting to include or adding too many sauces. This turns good food into bad for those with fatty liver. So use vinegar. It's good for your health, low in calories, and offers other metabolic benefits. Now, what are the best fruits? Since I'll be talking about fruits, I'll give you a list of the best foods. You'll probably ask which foods can help too. Garlic, onions, dark leafy greens like lettuce and arugula, fish, especially fatty fish like sardines and salmon. Some drinks have been studied too, like coffee, up to three or four cups a day. Green tea too, mind you. Drink green tea, not green tea capsules. Studies show capsules may harm your liver. So don't take coffee or green tea capsules. Drink the real thing. Other anti-inflammatory foods are being studied for liver fat. Chia, flax seeds can help with blood sugar spikes and gut health. So there are many beneficial foods. Kale, broccoli, cauliflower, eggplant, and more. I could make a whole video on this. If you're watching, comment if you want a specific video on these foods. Now let's look at the top 10 fruits for fatty liver. The number one fruit is avocado. Avocado is great, packed with antioxidants and healthy fats that can boost your cholesterol, especially the good HDL cholesterol. Unlike butter or coconut oil, this fat can actually benefit your heart health. So it's definitely worth adding avocado to your diet. By the way, I forgot to ask, where are you from? Which city do you live in? Can you find avocados there? Here in Porto Alegre, where I live, avocados are plentiful. Let's move on to number two, guava. Guava is excellent with fiber, antioxidants, and vitamins that help with liver fat. It's also low carb with a low glycemic index. Remember, we need to consider the glycemic index. 
How much of food raises blood sugar? Guava doesn't significantly increase blood sugar levels. Guava is one of the best fruits for fatty liver. Number three is pomegranate. Many studies link pomegranate to lower blood pressure. Did you know pomegranate can help reduce blood pressure levels, which is also great? These metabolic issues often come with high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and fatty liver. Pomegranate can help with this. Personally, I don't eat much pomegranate as I'm not a fan of the taste. Do you like it? If you do, it's definitely worth eating. And number four is orange. You heard me mention orange juice earlier, but whole oranges are different because you get the fiber. When I say orange, I mean with pulp, as you'll eat less carbs than juice. If you eat oranges, you get vitamins like C, and fibers that help in this process. Oranges with pulp are low glycemic index fruits, so it's worth adding them to your diet. Number five is red fruits like blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries. These fruits contain anthocyanin, which is widely studied for its health benefits. It's anti-inflammatory, has antioxidants that fight free radicals and can help treat fatty liver. So red fruits are definitely worth including in your diet. Strawberries, for example, will fill you up reduce your appetite and provide nutrients helping in this process. Number six is another fruit I love and eat daily, apples. There's a saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Why is that? Apples have a low glycemic index and pectin, a soluble fiber that benefits heart health and improves blood lipids. They also help stabilize blood sugar levels. So it's definitely worth adding apples to your diet. I eat lots of apples, about two or three a day. I like eating an apple before the gym for energy and satiety, which helps with training. And fruit number seven is the peach. Many think peaches are bad because they're sweet, but that's a big mistake. Peaches are great fruits with antioxidants that can help with fatty liver issues. Peaches are only harmful if you eat too many daily, but that's not the case, as with any excess. If you eat 15 oranges a day, then you'll have too much fructose. It's the same with peaches, but in moderate healthy amounts, you can include peaches in your diet. And number eight is lemon. Lemon is excellent, even as juice. Why? It's less concentrated, but lemon has properties that help with fatty liver. I love making flavored water. I add sparkling water and squeeze in lemon. It's delicious. It curbs cravings for sugary drinks and pairs well with meals. It also boosts iron absorption and offers various health benefits. Number nine is papaya. Many lists about fatty liver wrongly label it as forbidden, which is a big mistake. Why? Papaya is rich in nutrients like papain, which aids digestion and boosts metabolism. It's low in calories. Its nutrition facts show some carbs and fructose, but lots of fiber, which counts as carbs but isn't absorbed. So yes, you can eat papaya, okay? Be wary of this misconception. People often think papaya is bad when it's actually an excellent fruit. And number 10 is kiwi. There are many studies on kiwi's health benefits. It's rich in antioxidants, has anti-inflammatory properties, may lower blood pressure, and is delicious. So it's a great option for those with high blood pressure. Now, which fruit should you be more cautious about? Since I mentioned foods, I'll quickly add this part. These are fruits with higher carbohydrate concentrations. They're not forbidden fruits, okay, but they are fruits you should be more mindful of. Bananas, grapes, mangoes, dates, and dried fruits like raisins, prunes, and apricots. Why? Removing water concentrates the fruit, increasing its glycemic load and sugar content. This can have a bigger impact if you have fatty liver. They're not forbidden, but be mindful and limit the fruits I mentioned on a scale of zero to 10, how would you rate this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more videos like this one. Now, I've got a video suggestion for you to watch. It's about key habits to boost muscle mass if you're over 60. Did you know losing muscle mass negatively affects your metabolism? This can lead to issues like fatty liver, diabetes, and high blood pressure. It's crucial to maintain your muscle mass. Watch that video for the best muscle maintaining habits for over 60s. Take care and see you next time.